Hi, I'm glad you could join me. I'm in the New Testament today in the book of 2 Timothy. Of course, you recall that 2 Timothy was written by Paul. It was really the last letter that Timothy, or excuse me, that Paul ever wrote before he was executed and martyred under the uh, rule of the tyrant Nero. So Paul is in a dungeon and he is telling Timothy, these are your final instructions. Paul knows that the end is near. And so he wants to say something to Timothy that's going to have a lasting effect upon Timothy. Now, we recognize that the chapter divisions and verse markings are just for our accommodation. They are not inspired by the Holy Spirit. And so we recognize that there are times when those chapter divisions come at the wrong place. And that's the case in 2 Timothy. At the end of 2 Timothy 3, Paul says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness and explains why. And then the very next verse, now the whoever put the chapter divisions in put it at right the wrong place because that idea of the inspiration and the authority of Scripture is really the foundation for what Paul says to Timothy in chapter 4, verse 1. He says, I charge you in the presence of Christ Jesus. Now, think of this. Uh, excuse me, in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. You see, the Apostle Paul gives the strongest possible emphasis on this particular command to Timothy. He doesn't say with the strongest possible emphasis, uh, go out and be compassionate toward people. He doesn't say with the strongest possible emphasis, go out and baptize in this particular way. He says, with the strongest emphasis possible in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, the one who is going to appear, the one before whom we will stand in judgment, preach the word. Now that's the job of the preacher. That's what, that's what those who, who share the pulpits in America should be doing. In different ages, it's what they did do. I remember when I first uh, was looking at going into ministry, I thought to myself, I don't have the creativity to come and to give some ideas that uh, will, will make a difference for people each week. I don't have the, the ability to craft those things each week. And I don't, but I don't need to because I am charged with making sure I communicate what God's word says. My ideas as a preacher don't matter. And the ideas of your preacher, wherever he may be, don't matter. Now, hopefully, if, if he has been doing his diligence and, uh, and he has studied the word and he is communicating what the essence of that word is, then, then listen to him, of course. But the ideas that come just from the preacher, whether it's this preacher or any other, don't really matter. What matters is the scripture. What matters is that God has spoken through the scripture. And that's the job of the preacher, to make sure that he communicates what God says. I've, I've wondered at times if the Lord would lead me into a teaching ministry where I would teach preachers uh, and prepare preachers for ministry. And if I did, I, I've thought, you know, the main thing that I want to do as I relate and rate teachers or preachers is to ask the question, did you communicate what the scripture says? 
Now, now, some preachers are very eloquent. Some have lots of wonderful illustrations, and they can, they can bring application in a great way. But the question always must be, did I communicate what the text of the Scripture is? And if I didn't, no matter how eloquent I could be, I could be as uh, silver-tongued as, as John Chrysostom, I could be as deep as Jonathan Edwards, but if I don't communicate the text of Scripture, the proper meaning, the grammatical, historical meaning of that Scripture, I am worthless. And, that, and sadly, we have many in the church today who are, who are not communicating the Scripture. And they are using their own ideas, and, and they think that their cleverness is what's important. It's not. Paul says to Timothy in the strongest possible language, preach the word. It's his last command to Timothy. And that's what Timothy was required to do in the presence of God, in the presence of Christ Jesus, the one who will appear, the one who will judge him. He was to preach the word. Father, we ask you to change the pulpits of America. Grant that the pulpits of America would return to the proclamation of your truth and of your word. I pray that you would grant to me the grace to always keep that before, you, before me. And I pray, Father, for people who will challenge me whenever they think that I have gotten away from your truth. So meet me in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.